Hello everybody, welcome to our chapter 6. Today I'm going to tell you about lesson planning, okay? So what is the outline of the course I'm going to name them? So please go to your chapter 6. First I'm going to tell you about writing a lesson plan. After that, what are the aspects of lesson planning for TESOL courses and your ESL classes? Now, what are the aims of the lesson when you design a lesson plan? The, the next step is that <clears throat> I'm going to show you two samples of a lesson plan. One of them is a linear and one of them is a column-based lesson plan. After that, I'm going to share some tips for teaching. Okay. Now, let's go to our chapter. Now, the first thing is that why we write a lesson plan. Because we as instructors, we have to help our students. So we have to also record their progress. Okay, how they move on and how they go to the next stage. And then it's a good thing for us to evaluate what is happening in our class. The next thing about a good lesson plan is that we can keep the record. And also, if for the next time we need to modify something in the class, so we need this record for further modification. Uh, <clears throat> now, there are several things that we have to know before we write our first lesson plan in English. Number one is the aim and type of the lesson. So who is going to be in our class and what is going to happen to our students? Okay, The language is very important. What part of language are you going to teach reading, writing, listening? Or vocabulary so this is important for us now the stages you are going to design in this part I'm going to teach you about the PPP approach to design the lesson plan for your classes and finally what we have to do in each stage of the lesson plan okay if you go to part two of your chapter called lesson planning uh, we have to consider some factors number one who the learners are in our classes. Number two, what are the basic aims we have to follow? What kind of language, what kind of a skill or system I'm going to teach to my students? The next thing is about the teaching procedure. Are you going to select some nice activities for your students or not? That's part of the question, okay? And what they have to do in each activity. The next thing, for your lesson plan is the type of material that you want to use for your classes. Are you going to use textbooks or workbooks? We are going to use the online resources for your students, okay? So, or authentic ones. We have to put them in our mind in order to design a great lesson plan. There are the other factors like classroom management based on the number of your students. Then you decide how many students in my class and how I'm going to run this activity in the class. That's also important. And do they like it? Are they enjoying or not? All these are the basic questions. Now, when you design, the third part of the chapter talks about aims of the lesson. For example, we need to have a topic for your lesson. Today, I'm going to talk about marriage. Today, I'm going to talk about public transportation in Korea, China, Japan. Okay. Well, we need to have a topic, but remember, topic is not enough. We need to have a function, how to apologize, how to invite people, how to give information, and all those functions in language. The third thing is that we need to have skill in our mind, as I already mentioned in the beginning of the chapter. Now, the next point that we have to think about is that uh, there might be some problems and we have to find solutions for those problems in our class. I'll tell you more in a real sample. Uh, let's go to our linear lesson plan that we put here in this chapter for you. I'm having it in my computer. So if you go to, I wrote that here is an example for the linear model. Okay, in the linear model, and as, as I told you already, we are having a PPP model. The first thing is presentation. So what should I do? I have to start my class. Presentation means you go to your class, you start the class, okay? Then you present or you start, you launch the course. Now, the first thing is that we need to create a very friendly environment to our students. 
So we can use our own background knowledge, our own stories, in order to start class. Usually the presentation takes about 20 minutes, okay, 15 to 20 minutes. For example, in the first step, what I did, I need to create interest among my students. So I tell them a personal story about my life. My story has to be related to the topic I teach in the class, right? So when you talk, then you have to wait, give feedback to your students, as I already mentioned here. The next thing, after you have the lead in or creating interest in your class, you need to go and present the new language in a contest. If you want to teach them vocabulary, okay, you have to consider the importance of context for your lesson plan. The next thing that the students have to know is about, we call it modeling and pronunciation. If you're going to teach them uh, a range of words, okay, you have to think about the correct pronunciation of those words in your class and to model them to your students. After that, we need elicitation. So how it happens? We ask sometimes comprehension questions from our students. Okay, when you teach something, they say that, for example, uh, who was in my party last week? Okay, and then they say that Tom was there. You say, perfect. So you answered my question, Tom was in my class. Or sometimes you ask them, when I talk about my party, that was last week. Am I talking about the present tense, past or future? They say past tense. They say, very good. Okay, so see, these are the elicitation. I want to double check. They understood everything in my class. Now, perfect. Let's go to the next step, that is to systematize what you teach. Now, when you talk, 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 suppose I'm going to teach you about present perfect continuous. So my lesson plan is about present perfect continuous. When I talk about, for example, I have been teaching English for nine years, I tell my students about my own story, that's fine. But the students need something understandable, something tangible. You can type, you can write on the whiteboard. Like what? I can write the formula of present perfect continuous. I can say has, have, plus PP plus ING, okay? Been plus ING, like I have been working. So have, has, plus um, been plus verb ING, and then show that how it works, right? So in the stage number five that we need to systematize, I come and write the formula or structure on the board. That's all. That was the first peak. That was presentation. After that, we go to practice. I have to practice it in my class. So what happens? This is the time students sit, sit together, and you as an instructor, you encourage them to work in pair or group to do the activities, okay? Like, for example, in activity number one, we have a group work, and we're working on a mechanical drill for students, okay? The next thing, or in the next activity, could be a pair work, and that's quite meaningful. I wrote uh, three activities for you here. The third one is communicative activity. Be careful. If you want to write a very nice lesson plan, we need to have a kind of mechanical one, because it's easier for students to do it. Then we go to like a little bit more meaningful, and finally, when they are become faster and faster, we encourage communicative activity in the class. So when they practice in your class for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, now is the time for production. So we started the class, we presented the material, they practiced, very good. Now is the time for production. So that is PPP, presentation, practice, and production. In the production stage, they have to show me what they learned already in the class, okay? And how they can show, they can show, for example, by writing something or by talking about something in my class. For example, in my activity number one, that is a pair work, the students, they, uh, they talk about an email about my trip, so they have to write something, they go and 
okay, to listen to their friends and also talk about their field trip. So I'm encouraging all these skills in a production stage. The next activity uh, is called further practice as homework. So I give them this to go home and practice further. Now, the last thing about okay, lesson planning is that what are the basic steps to design a unique, very practical and functional lesson plan is that the physical environment is very important. Okay, Try to always have in your mind what happens in your class, what are the facility, and how are you going to use them. Okay? The next thing, the students must have enough information about your course. So, please give them openly. The next thing, we need to know about our students, who they are, what they do in our class. Later, we have the contact and communication. We always have to encourage this between our students. And finally, there are some tips for you to teach better. Please read all these tips because we are going to go to our assignment. In the next part, I'm going to tell you about our assignment and what are the essentials of assignment and how you need to submit it to us. Thank you so much. Let's go to assignment number one. That is for your lesson. Welcome to assignment number one. Remember, this assignment is very important for you because it's the first time you could design your lesson plan. That is the PPP model. Now, what are the things we have to do? Number one, be careful. Your task is to design this PPP model for your lesson plan. Now, you can go to your chapter, chapter six. We already put two models for you. So it's your choice. You could go for the linear one or the column based. Okay, it is okay for us. Now, the purpose is to design a lesson plan for teaching the simple past, or that is, or the regular verbs. In our chapter, we already gave you irregular verbs. Now, try to look at that one, okay, and try to design this. Now, be careful. The level is for the beginners. You are going to teach beginners. Their okay, level is a little bit too low, so try to keep it in your mind. What are the aims? The aims is to present the function about talking in the past, okay? And um, the structure is the simple past. The assumption is that the students, they know already the concept of simple, ten, simple tense. Like, I work in a bank, I go to the restaurant, like this. But they are going to learn the this type of past tense that is regular, okay? So we could add ed to the verbs. Uh, be careful, you might face some problems. I wrote here for you, students so may wrongly add ed to end of which some words which are irregular already. Like for example, write, they say righted, okay, instead of wrote. So that might be a problem in your class. Now, in your class, you could use whiteboard, video clips, handout, flashcards, and more, okay? So try to write this. Try to write your lesson plan. This is very important for us because we see how could you design your first lesson plan. When it's done, please talk to your instructor. Submit the form. If you have any question, try to contact your instructor. And then uh, try it. You can write your first lesson plan.